and the teach kind of is on me here. So we're going to teach and, and let you see a few things on my chart, and it's going to be a blessing to your lives, and um, I'm just trusting God. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today. Father, we thank you for your anointing, the anointing on your word. Father, we thank you for anointing my lips, Father. Father, I thank you that out of my spirit flows, Father, the words that you would have me to say through the Holy Ghost, Father. And Father, I thank you that lives are changed. I thank you that each of us take a step up higher. Each of us, our eyes are open more to you and your plan and your purposes here in this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Now, we know Pastor, um, did he finish last week his church, the church's mission? The, uh, let's see, what was the exact title? The church and its mission. So, yeah, the church and its mission. And so this is going to a little bit pick up with that, but then we're going to go in a, a little bit of a different direction. But it's all going to be good. Amen? Amen. So, first of all, I want to start with, let me put aside a few things here. I want to start with um, talking just a minute about the fact that um, I believe back Christmas, Jessica, was it Christmas that Jessica ministered about God's number one interest? Yes, yeah. Christmas. And um, I wanted to uh, just kind of touch on that a little bit. The fact that God's number one interest is the lost. But how many of you know he has a number two and a number three interest? And probably a four, five, six, and seven. And where do we find the interest of God? In his word. His word is full of what he desires of us and for us to be involved in. And so, that being said, in Matthew 16, 23, uh, if you'll turn with me there, Matthew 16, and verse 23, and we read here, it says, um, But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Our goal in life as a Christian is to savor the things that be of God. Amen? The things that are interesting, that are God's interest, those are the things that we as Christians want to savor. Those are the things that we want to take upon our hearts to cause us to go forward and to cause us to go through this earth with a mission. And that mission needs to be what the Father God wants done here in the earth. Okay? So, that being said, we're going to read... Um, actually, we're going to say something, then we're going to read. Um, and that is, how many of you know, um, this is a little sad to talk about, but when, you know, a Christian gets very, very old and they decide they're ready to go, and they call in the family, and they want to talk to each of them, and they tell them something. What do you think they tell them? They tell them the thing that is, they believe, most important they want to tell them that that's the last words that they give them to remember them by and to remember what they want of them in this life or whatever. You know, they bless them and Jesus did the same thing when he left. And the thing that was on his heart when he left, we see in the Gospels in several places, and that was he wanted people to be born again. But not only did he want them to be born again, he wanted them to walk in the power of the Spirit. I'd say that's probably getting the Holy Ghost. And he also wanted them to know his teachings. He wanted the gospel to be preached and taught so that people would know what the word of God says. That is his top three interest in the earth, okay? So, um, let's look in Mark 16 and... 
Let's see, verse 15. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and he sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. And then we see in Matthew chapter 27, if you want to look there with me, Matthew 27, and we uh, start with verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. Amen. So we see here two places in the gospel where the message is clear. Amen. That he wants us to go into all the world. And he wants us to share the message that has changed our lives that we believed on. He wants us to share it with everyone. That commission has not stopped because uh, the apostles passed away, right? Yep. It's still going on. So his number one interest, the lost getting born again. Number two, filled with the Holy Ghost. And number three, we're going to say it like this, and that is growing spiritually. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 4.10 tells us, let's, let's actually, we're going to... Um, not read the whole thing. Let's just start with verse uh, 13. Ephesians 4, 13. It says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Am I going too fast, guys? Okay. In the, I'm trying to get everything done. In the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto edifying of itself in love. We see here in verse 15, it says, but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into him in all things. God wants us to grow up. He wants us to pass what we would consider babyhood stage, and he wants us to grow into adulthood. Why? Why can't we just stay babies? Why? Well, I would dare say it's because he wants us to be able to go out just like he commissioned and to take this gospel and it's very hard to do it when you're a baby how many of you know most of you have either had a baby in your family or you have a baby in your family or you've had the opportunity to be around a baby how many of you know they can't really get everywhere they want to go all the time right they try <laughs> <laughs> but they can't really get there. And even childhood stage, we kind of 
you know, we, we, we try as children to get everywhere we want to go, but we can't. Well, we don't have driver's license or whatever, and we can't go there. But in adulthood stage, if we have grown properly and everything, we get to the point that we can go and do, drive, go places, wherever our heart's desire may take us, as long as we're faithful to continue to work and earn some money, that it will take us there. Amen? So the same thing thing in uh, looking at spiritual growth, we have stages. And um, I can't think of a better place um, that I actually copied just the first, <clears throat> excuse me, just the first two pages out of Brother Hagen's book, Growing Up Spiritually, because that's all I'm going to use from it, except for some reading I did, and that is the table of contents. <laughs> and the table of contents is really good, <laughs> because the table of contents has here, uh, I, I'm a skimmer sometimes, I must admit, I, I don't always read every book that I pick up, and I love to skim, and I've become a professional skimmer, <laughs> in books that is, and I, um, you know, sometimes I can look at the beginning and the end and maybe a few things in the middle and the con table of contents and ah, I got enough out of that. That's good. Well, anyway, we got the table of contents we're going to talk about today and that is the different stages, um, babyhood, childhood, and manhood, three characteristics of those three stages. This isn't the main part of the message. I'm just, like I said, I have several places I could land and it looks like I'm landing everywhere. So we're doing one of those three-point stops here because I had three sets of notes and here we go okay <laughs> uh, this is different from pastor I know <laughs> notes what are notes <laughs> but anyway babyhood stage here in babyhood stage there's such an innocence See, we just had a little baby come in at the back of the church there. Yeah. Babyhood stage, there's such an innocence. And there's an ignorance about many things. We have to teach them. They're ignorant about everything in the beginning, and they must learn. They must learn where to go, where not to go. What hurts the baby, as Jessica used to say, call, she used to call a knife, I hurt the baby. <laughs> because we would not let her have it at the restaurants, you know, you'd roll out the napkin there'd be a knife and we'd take it away and we'd go no 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 that could hurt the baby and so she always called she'd be load, loading the dishwasher and she'd go hurt the baby spoon <laughs> fork <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> she made us laugh so many times because she's so uh, expressive and has so much to say but anyway ignorance about many things and then another quality or uh, characteristic of babyhood stage is irritability irritability you know they don't get what they want what do they do oh my goodness they can curl the p wallpaper off of a room with their squill right you know they're just irritable then we have what we call childhood in childhood there's an unsteadiness how many of you have ever been around kids where they tell you they're going to do 10 different things when they grow up. You know, they just don't know. They don't have a clue what they're going to do when they grow up. And so they tell you, I'm going to be this, and I'm going to be that. And, you know, they're just not steady and, and set in anything. And then also with this stage of childhood, there's a curiosity. A curiosity, they... they check things out and they find out things didn't work and sometimes they get bitten <laughs> because it didn't work or or I remember one time one of my kids um, electrocuted themselves with they put a paper clip in a, an electrical socket you know they were curious and yeah <laughs> they got something <laughs> and um, and I also remember one time um, one of my kids ate a dead spider. I was grossed out. They were curious, you know. They found this dead spider. They're like, what is this? And, you know, uh, you wouldn't think somebody would eat a spider. But, yeah, when you're curious, you do all kinds of things because you haven't been able to yet figure out what you should be curious about and what you shouldn't be, okay? And then another characteristic of childhood is talkativeness. 
How many of you have ever noticed? Now, that doesn't mean everybody's that. Every child is that way. Some children, for whatever reason, things that have happened in their lives, they feel like they can't talk. But for the most part, a very healthy young person, young lady, young man who's living in a very healthy environment, a lot of times they talk non-stop. I remember <laughs> when Jessica, I know I keep telling these Jessica stories, but she was the one that talked all the time and did all these things. The other ones were just perfect angels, right Nathan? Yeah, perfect angels. But, <laughs> but, but I remember one time um, I used to have to tell her that it's quiet time because she talked nonstop. And you know, you just couldn't take but so much of her talking nonstop. And so you would just tell her, I would, I would tell her, okay, and I'm a good mommy, but I would still tell her. I'd say, honey, it's quiet time right now, so let's not talk right now, you know. And she would watch the clock till the quiet time was over. Because <laughs> she wanted to talk, you know. So those are some stages of childhood. And then by the time we reach adulthood, Hood, we should be at this point esteeming earthly things lightly. We, another characteristic is that there should be a deadness to um, censure or praise. We don't, we don't feel like we have to have praise to, to keep going on. We, we can go on and do things and, and we don't have to have someone say, that's a good job, honey, keep up the good work. But we can go on and, and when you're a full adult manhood stage, you can do whatever God's told you to do and you don't have to have somebody pat you on the back. I think of pastor when I think of this because, you know, um, he keeps going and he keeps on preaching the gospel and he's faithful to what God has called him to do in the midst of, um, you know, people not always patting him on the back. <laughs> Sometimes people want him to punch him on the back, you know, but he stays faithful and faithful and uh, he doesn't, whether they tell him he's doing a great job or not, he keeps preaching and he keeps doing. Yeah. And, uh, and then this last uh, characteristic I wanted to talk about is the ability to recognize God at work. When you can recognize God is at work in a situation, you don't become irritable. You don't talk about how bad everything's going, but you just say what the Word says, and you continue to say what the Word says, and you recognize that God is at work in your life, in the lives of those around you, in situations that may come up. He's at work, okay? That's good, isn't it? It's very good. Okay, so we're, that's all we're going to do with that. So that's last second city we visited. Okay, so now we're going to get to, eventually we're going to get to my chart here, but I want to um, read to you, like I said earlier, God's number one, two, and three interests, what did we say? The lost. What else? Come on class. What? Being filled with the Holy Ghost. And the third one? growing up spiritually. That's what we're going to concentrate on today is the growing up spiritually. So if you will look with me um, in 1 Peter 2.2. 2, I'll wait for you to get there. First Peter 2.2 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. All right. You know me. I don't just read certain scriptures and just read them, but I tear them um, each little bit apart so that we can get a better understanding. So this word here, desire, means to long for or to pursue. We, when we become born again, are to long for and pursue the Word of God. And that longing and that pursuit should never end. It should be a lifelong trip. We should always long for and pursue 
the word of God. And here it says, uh, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. That word sincere, that word means unmixed, unmixed, pure, and unadulterated. In other words, the pure word of God, not any of this mess that's being preached today as a befuddled version of the word of God, but the pure word of God. Where do you find the pure word of God? The word. And how do you read the word? You read it with a heart that is prepared and open for God to speak. It, it wouldn't be a bad plan that when you sit down to read the Word of God that you pray. And you say, Father God, show me. Give me light today as I read your Word. Show me where it can change and affect my life so that I can be a better witness for you in this earth. Okay? So that's a good plan. To always desire the sincere milk of the word. And let's see, I believe um, this here part milk actually means, because we're talking about newborn babes here, it actually means the less difficult of the Christian truths. Okay? So we get to the point as we grow, we are no longer little babes and we turn into children and then we turn into adults and we get to where we can receive the meat of the word. But in the beginning, and we have to locate ourselves um, once we begin to grow and make sure that we are seeking and desiring the Word of God and the meat of the Word of God and continuing to grow. Do we ever get completely grown up? No, no. And you ask any adult out here, you know, I am um, so many years old now and <laughs> I actually, I tell my students at school how old I am, and I think they want to A, because they say, yeah, I thought you were in your 30s. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're doing. You, know? <laughs> you want that A, I get it, I see the picture. But as we grow older, we still grow in the things of God, and we never, ever completely grow up, because if we did, we wouldn't need to eat and feed on the Word of God, would we? we? It is a continual process because we want our faith continually increasing. And so we want to keep feeding. And so many times there are Christians who do not continue, and we're going to talk about that here in a minute. I know we're going to get all this in. We're going to talk about that. But there are so many Christians who do not continue to stay in the Word of God, and those are the Christians that grow into what we call hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Okay? Hypocrites. And many, many people have heard of hypocrites. Many people, I know I've had family members that have said they wouldn't have anything to do with the church because the church that they knew was the church that was brought to them by people who were supposed to be great men of God in the eyes of the church, and they were hypocrites, you know? Like I remember my dad, um, he, he shared a story years ago about um, somebody in his life who, um, it's when you're getting on television you gotta watch how you handle things here but this person was a deacon in a church and he had two illegitimate children out there that his wife knew nothing about and he would send his employees to pay the bills to the different women that he had and the wife knew nothing about it and this person had a place of authority in my father's life and so for years he would have nothing to do with God because this was his representation of God that's why we as Christians must grow in the things of God and grow spiritually spiritually so that we will take the gospel and will be a good represent, representation of the gospel to people and they will desire to be like us. They will want to be like us. They will want to walk in the places we're walking and that all comes by us growing in the things of God by spending time in his word. All right, let's see. See if we can get on now to the main part of the message here. And that is, we talked about the fact that we need to grow up. I'm going to now turn my little chart around. 
that I made for you guys yesterday. This is our growing up spiritually chart. When we get born again, this is basically what our life looks like. We've got the word that we're going to start to get into and this word um, begins to govern the beliefs that we have and therefore it begins to govern the things we think, say, and do in life. Okay? But we also, when we get, when we first get born again, we have this thing to deal with. What's this? Flesh. We have flesh to deal with. And the flesh also, at this point, is governing what we think, say, and do. Okay? Now, there comes a place where as we begin to grow the knowledge of the word, in the knowledge of the word, it begins to form our beliefs. And the goal is for the Bible, the word of God, to be what we base and govern what we think, say, and do based on the beliefs that we get from the Word of God, okay? However, for some, these are the ones, this chart stays this way always for what we call hypocrites. They have two ways. They're letting the Word sometimes govern what they do, and they're letting their flesh govern what they do. And we've all met people like this who haven't grown up and who are letting the flesh govern sometimes and the word govern sometimes. Our goal should be, let me show you what our goal should be. Let me see if I can get, it, get everything over here. I'm working on it. Bear with me. Television people, bear with me. <laughs> okay, our goal should be that we make a disconnect here. And this is what our goal should now be. Just as we see it, the Word of God affects our beliefs. Our beliefs become Bible-based. The things that we think in our heart are all Bible-based. And then they govern what we think, say, and do. How do we get to this place and get rid of this flesh governing everything? How do we do that? We're going to talk about that right now. First of all, I can't say it enough, get in the Word get in the word get under the influence of the word get around believers that believe in the word amen very important very important that we get in the word of god that we place the word of god in, at a high place and priority in our lives okay Life is busy, but it's n never so busy that we don't have time to spend in the Word. Because in the Word is life. It is light for every dark situation. It is answers for every question ever asked. It's full of answers. It's full of wisdom, and that's why we must stay in the Word. All of our uh, life growing as a Christian, we've got to continue to stay in the Word. And then, can't be said enough, read the Word. Read it. Hear it. How do you hear it? Well, you can hear it on tapes and methods that we have through the internet, but nothing takes the place of hearing it live and in person with the anointing of the Holy Ghost on the minister who is preaching or sharing or teaching the Word of God. Nothing takes that place. So we're going to read it, we're going to hear it, we're going to meditate it, we're going to recite it, confess it, and declare it. A few weeks ago in the children's class, I love teaching the children because it makes you just get right down to the nitty-gritty, simplistic message of the gospel. And um, one Wednesday night recently, we were sharing about uh, Bible times and old times and what the Jews would do to help them, the men would tie this little box around their wrist. And we actually made boxes in class that night. 
And inside the box, they, they would have a ribbon and it would tie around their wrist. They would have um, the Word of God. And the reason that they would put it on their wrist and have it right here was they would see it all the time. And they would be reminded of the Word of God and the things of God and how they're supposed to be living and everything. And it was a constant reminder to them. So, you know, I don't, I don't know that you need to go and tie a box around your wrist, but maybe if there is some way you remember things, you know, do something to help you remember to think about the Word of God and to read the Word of God on your daily path, you know? put it at a place of importance. I know I used to work in a pharmacy and we had to wear a smock and our smock had two pockets. It was like a shirt almost and uh, buttoned down the front and we had two pockets. So I carried around with me a little New Testament and I carried around with me scriptures written on note cards, just little cheap three by fives, you know? You could write them, and, um, and I would put them in my pocket. And the other people that worked there would go and take cigarette breaks in the bathroom. <laughs> and I figured if they can take a cigarette break and go in there, and you know it takes a little while to smoke that cigarette, I could go in there and take a word break. So I would go in there, and I would pull out my scriptures and refresh myself. I actually had this boss that was almost impossible to get along with, very condescending, thought women were good for nothing but living in the home, having children and nothing else, and that they were all dumb. <sighs> Being raised the way I was, I didn't get along too well with that kind of thinking because <laughs> I was a very independent young lady. And so anyway, long story short, I wrote on there the scripture that talks about um, that I'll have no offense toward God or men. And I would go in there, and I can't tell you how many times I had to read that scripture to myself during the day to get through the day with this fella who treated me like I was a dumbo all the time, you know, and I couldn't add or subtract. And at this time, I had my math degree and my computer science degree was looking for a job but still working there in the process. But I was dumb, you know. So anyway, I had to refresh my memory of what the Word had to say about this fella and how to get along with him and how to be a witness in the midst of being aggravated about every half hour, you know? So the point is, put something, some way to remind you to keep that word forefront in your life, to keep it as an important part of your life. Okay, so we're going to look at think, say, and do. First of all, if the word is going to affect our beliefs, our beliefs then become Bible-based beliefs. So the word, whatever the Word of God has to say, that is what we begin to believe. You know, we believe to get born again, right? Because we knew what the Word said. The Word said what about being born again? Who can tell me? Anybody in the class? <laughs> Anybody? What does the Word say? That if we will con and believe... Yeah, yeah, we got to believe. So our belief was based on what the Word had to say, and then that caused us, it governed what we thought, what we said, and what we did, right? We thought, we believed in our heart, and then we said with our mouth, and we did it, right? And so because of that, we got born again. Same thing with many other things that are in the Word. We got to think what the Word says. In um, 2 Corinthians 10.5, if you'll look with me there. Real quick here, it says, basically, this is talking about things that will try to come against what the Word of God says and in our thought life. And we've got to take authority over that and think according to what the Word says. Here it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. How many of you know thoughts will come? Amen? 
thoughts will come when situations aggravate us thoughts will come and we'll have to choose I told my son just a couple of days ago I said son when you hear me preaching this Sunday morning growing up spiritually I said no that I'm preaching at myself too we do that you know <laughs> we're not just preaching for you guys to hear because I was aggravated with a situation to do with him not him but someone in his life that had done something and I was aggravated and oh I was I was starting to think thoughts that were not godly thoughts you know yeah. <laughs> somebody goes messing with your child and you just want to take them out you know and but then I realized that that's not God's thoughts yeah. <laughs> they're not his thoughts you know and so that's where we have to to take those thoughts and bring them captive and we have to bring them captive to what the knowledge of God has to say and what the word has to say concerning that situation and that will change our whole behavior and that will change how we act and treat the situation and God has been talking to me about this situation son and we, we've got plans we've got a solution but but anyway you know it we've got to take those thoughts and we've got to bring them into subjection to what the word has to say and then Philippians 4 8 if I get a little fast I'm going to try to get all this in and I know we're starting to run out of a little bit of time so Philippians 4 8 says finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of a good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things well that'll take care of a lot of stinking thinking won't it yeah it'll take care of a lot of stinking thinking when you read a scripture like this and then you take what you were thinking and line it up oh it's not honest it's not just it's not pure it's not lovely it's not a good report got to change the way I'm thinking so we've got to let the Word of God we've got to let the Word change us till our beliefs are Bible based I had it somewhere here Bible based beliefs so that it will govern what we think say and do Let's look at another um, scripture. Well, no, we're not going to look at it. I'll just tell you in Proverbs, there's a scripture that says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We've got to begin to think what the Word of God says about us. And if we've been doing that, we've got to continue doing that when the devil rises up and tries to tell you otherwise. We've got to line it up with the Word of God and think the thoughts that are in line with his Word. Amen? Now let's look at say. We're going to look at say. Proverbs is full of scriptures. I encourage you, because you should be a student of the word, I encourage you, if you have any kind of computerized um, uh, Bible where you can do a search on a word, look up the word tongue. And look at all the scriptures in Proverbs about the tongue. We can't go over all of them this morning, but I picked out a few. Proverbs 15.4 says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in spirit. I don't know about you, but I want to live in life, God's life, God's plan. And when we keep our tongue lined up with what his word says, we walk and we talk in his light. Okay? Let's look at Proverbs 18.21. Actually, 18.20. We'll start with 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Our mouth, what we say, must be lined up with what the Word of God says for us to walk in life and enjoying the fruit thereof. Do you know, we get, um, we get to the point 
that sometimes we forget how far in God we have gone and the things that we're walking in as we grow spiritually that we almost begin to take it for granted until we get around someone who's just starting in the things of God and they see the things you have, the peace you walk in, the, the comfort that you have, the, your ability to go and do things with God being right there supporting you and everything and that freedom that you have and that life that you walk in and they look at you in amazement how could their life ever be that way and 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 glory to God and we've got to realize that we are walking in something because we have followed God's plan and that plan, they can also walk in that. And that's something we can share with them and be a witness to them about God's goodness. And we can walk in that life. And things will not be bad for us. Proverbs 21, 23 says, Whoso keepeth his mouth and keepeth his tongue, keepeth his soul from troubles. Now that's a good one, isn't it? That one will preach a long time, but I don't have time to preach it, so. But anyway, he, whoso keepeth his mouth. What does it mean, keepeth his mouth? What do you think it means, keepeth his mouth? He knows when to open it, knows when to shut it, and knows what to let out of it, right? And what does he let out of it? Things that are totally in line with the Word of God, okay? What the Word says about us. Amen? What the Word says. Now we've all had um, frustrated times or whatever. You know, this is not a condemning message. This is a message of let's, let's, let's put it back on. Let's, let's go forward. You know, for some of us we've had situations or whatever and we felt like we've failed in this area. Don't, don't let this be condemning to you. I'm not here to condemn anyone. I am here to bring light. To open your eyes. That's what we prayed, didn't we? Before we even started ministering, light. We want light to come. So don't leave here thinking, oh, oh, she's talking to me. You know? Now the Holy Ghost is ministering life and light right now. Amen. James 1.26 says, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. Well, that would kind of be this person if we took this back off, this flesh governing what they think, say, and do also, right? Yeah? Exactly, because he's not able to bridle and to keep things, and so he's deceiving his own heart. Um, let's see, let's see, we're trying to keep up with time here. Um, James has some other scriptures that talk about the tongue, and um, in uh, the third chapter of James, it talks about the tongue as a fire, a world of iniquity. And that um, it, it, so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell. So anyway, you can read some more of that at home, do some study on your own. But we couldn't get through this say part without hitting on a main scripture in the word and that is Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24, and 25. But Mark 11:23 is kind of the scripture that everybody starts reading from. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and ye shall have them. And of course, before and after that are some good scriptures to go along with it. And then um, 1 Peter 3.10 says, for that, will, for that will love life and see good days. Let him 
refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. So the first part of the scripture talks about what we're saying. And it says that refrain his tongue from evil. Okay? We want to refrain our tongue from evil. And that's what a mature man or woman in God can do. And we want to get to that stage. Okay? And for some of us may be at that stage. Some of us may be at that stage sometimes, but still wobbling back and forth. We can get to that stage and live in that place. Amen? Amen. Amen. We can. We can. But then the second part of this scripture kind of goes along with the last item, do. And it says here, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. So we are to also let our Bible-based beliefs that we get from the Word of God govern what we do. Now, I want to tell you something real quick, and that is, I, I wrote myself a little note here because I was amazed. I won't say who, what, when, or where, but, I, well, I will say when, recently. <laughs> um, I was amazed. This, um, this relative of a, a fairly large um, ministry um, decided to take some what would Jesus do bracelets to work. And I'm telling you, the people she worked with were Christians. They got bent out of shape that she took what would Jesus do bracelets to work she didn't say a word. She just handed them out because she had gotten an order of them. And they were upset because they said she was being judgmental by saying, what would Jesus do being judgmental? My guess is they were kind of off on this grace stuff. I don't know. But, but that would be my guess because the Bible tells us that we're to do, uh, eschew evil and do good and seek peace. We're supposed to do what the Word says, right? And the Word is full of things that we're commanded to do. So why would anybody get upset? Because I believe somewhere in the Bible it tells us that we're to be like Jesus, right? We're supposed to imitate. Yeah. And so why would we be upset about what would Jesus do? Except that we don't want to do what Jesus does. Uh-oh, uh -oh, I went to meddling there, didn't I? <laughs> but it's the truth. It's the truth. We want to do what's in the Word. We want to be doers of the Word. And it, if it uh, makes you uptight when someone says, what would Jesus do? Excuse me. There's a problem. Yeah. And it's not on the Bible in. <laughs> Now is it? <laughs> no, it's not on the Bible in. So let's look at some more do scriptures. James um, 1.21, this is one of my favorite scriptures. I actually um, shared this, uh, me a whole message on this scripture when I was in Italy, but they didn't remember my sermon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, it's a good message because the Word of God is what we should be doing. And let's read James 1, through 26. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted Word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Okay, doers of the word, and not hearers only. I believe that would qualify for me removing this as well, and us seeing the flesh governing what we think, say, and do, when we are not doers of the word, and we deceive ourselves. Because then we, we don't know, we begin to, uh, something I've, I've thought about recently is these people that are compulsive liars, they actually begin to think the lies that they tell are the truth. 
which amazes me. They live in a constant lie, and they think the lies that they're saying are truth. Well, that's sad, because they're living in a state where they are still letting the flesh govern. I tried to fix this so I could pull them off easy. They're still letting the flesh govern what they think, say, and do. And then sometimes they're letting the word govern what they think, say, and do. It can't be this way because then we walk deceiving ourselves. And that's the worst kind of deception there is when you walk around and you are deceiving yourself. For if you are a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh in the perfect law of liberty continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed." And, of course, then it goes on to talk about the tongue, but we're not going to get there because we're talking about do, okay? 1 Corinthians 10.31 tells us that whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. If, if we could remember that scripture, that would straighten out stinking thinking 99.9% .9 of the time. Can I do this unto the Lord? And if your answer is no, you better stop yourself because you're growing and you realize it and you don't want to deceive yourself. Because when you're growing in the Lord, and you know what the word says, and then you don't do what the word says, but you let your flesh govern what you think, say, or do, you're beginning to step into that area where you're going to be deceived and you're going to be walking around as a hypocrite. You don't want to do that. We want to we be a witness for the Lord, don't we? We want to be upright for the Lord. We want to do what's right. We don't want to live two different lives. No. There's many people in the past in the church as a whole, I'm not talking about this church, I'm talking about the church of God, that many of them, their children don't serve God today because they live two lives. One life in public and another life at home and out and about carousing at night. You know? You know what I mean? We got to be doers of the word. We've got to do what the Word says. Um, let's see. Galatians 5.17. We're getting close to the end here. Galatians 5.17.25 through 25 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust, lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. That word would there means things that ye have in your mind. Doesn't that make that a little easier to understand? Mm -hmm. Things that you have in your mind. Yeah, just like I was talking about earlier where I told my son a couple of days ago I'm preaching at me because things I had in my mind were not according to the Word of God, you know? I wanted to deck this person, you know? <laughs> oh, Pastor Janie, you wouldn't ever think that way, would you? Well, thoughts come to any of us. But we have to bring them into captivity to the Word of God. Amen? Amen? All right. Don't you love it how I just tell you <laughs> what I'm really thinking and what I'm like? Yeah, I don't have anything to hide. We're all people, and all people, the devil comes and tries to sidetrack us. But we've got to stay with the Word. We've got to stick with the Word. So here it says... Um, that you cannot do the things that ye would have in your mind. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variants, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the 
which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Amen. We can do that. We can walk in the Spirit. We can take thoughts that come and line them up with the Word of God and throw out the ones that do not agree with the Word of God. And we can do all this because we know what the Word says, because we've studied the Word and we've spent time in the Word, and it has affected what we believe. Um, let's see... And then uh, several places in the Bible, it uses the word conversation, and we're, we're talking about doing. So you think conversation, that's an under saying. But it actually, that word conversation actually means the way we conduct and behave ourselves. So it's not really necessarily what we're saying, it's how we behave. We've all seen people behaving badly, yeah, and conducting themselves badly. But we can do what the Word of God says because we've let the Word of God affect what we believe and therefore we can think, say, and do according to the Word of God and let our spirit man reign superior, okay? So in Ephesians 2, 3, it's, it talks about um, among whom also we had our conversation, that is our conduct and the way we behave ourselves, in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. But now, because we have been born again, we, and, uh, you know, there's different camps that think because you get born again, you do everything perfect from that moment on. You're a full-grown adult. But we know that we uh, deal with people. As pastors, we deal with people. And Pastor talked about his pastor, how back in the, on the streets of Cleveland years ago when he got born again, his brother was already born again, but just a little while himself. And they went out and got a six-pack to celebrate that they got set, one of them got saved. So we know that we can grow in the Lord and we may get born again and be a baby, but we begin to change and grow up into adulthood. And that's our desire. That's God's desire for us is to grow into mature adults in Him. And that comes by spending time in the Word, whether it's at home, whether it's listening to it on CDs and MP3s and iPods and on internet, or whether it is coming here in the assembly of the brethren together, being in the, um, all of us together, whichever way it is, the word, the word, the word. The word has to have an, uh, an effect on our lives to the point that it causes us to change the way we think, to change the way we talk, and to change the things we do. Uh, let's see, do I have any more scriptures here? Well, Ephesians 4.22 is good, but we're not going to read it all. But... Um, You put off verse 22 of Ephesians 4, uh, 4.22. Um, says that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. But we've got to do that, okay? We've got to do what the Word says. We've got to stay faithful doing what the Word says. We can choose to not do what the Word says. We, we, you know that as well as I do. We can choose to not walk according to His Word, but we can also choose to do what the Word says when we let the word and the beliefs that we gain from the word govern what we say and do. 
Philippians 1.27 is another place where it uses that word conversation. Only let your conversation or the way you conduct and behave yourself be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I am come and see you or else be absent. And that's, that's another thing. When you reach adulthood stage as a Christian, you realize that what you do the Father God sees. I raised my children from the time they were just little bitty things because, you know, a lot of times children think if mommy and daddy aren't watching, I can do whatever I want to do. And I taught them from the beginning, whether I see it or not, the Father God sees everything you do. He knows what you're doing, you know? And so you've got to please him ultimately. You know, you can please me and look real sweet and everything, but that doesn't mean anything in the long run. Your, your goal has to be that you're going to please the Father God. And our goal has to be that there is no place we can go that the Father God does not see what we're doing. You know, there's no place you can hide, and, and so many people still think that. They think they can live a certain way, and no one will see. The Father God sees. He knows what you're doing. So I encourage you today, let the Word of God affect um, what you do. Let the Word of God change what you say, and let the Word of God change how you think. Amen? Let it have preeminence in your life. And how can it have preeminence? Well, if you never open it, it can't, can it? It can't. You've got to open the Word. You've got to hear the Word. You've got to read the Word. You've got to meditate the Word. You've got to declare the Word. You've got to confess the Word. You've got to do all of these for it to become um, an Im important factor in shaping your life. Father, we just thank you for today's message. And Father God, we thank you that hearts have been encouraged in the things of God. And Father, we thank you for your loving kindness and your mercy and compassion upon us. Father, we thank you for opening our eyes. We thank you, Lord, for showing us how we can be more like Jesus, how we can be more like him, how we can walk in this earth successful, sharing the love that you have placed in our hearts with others, helping us, Lord, showing us by your Holy Spirit within us, teaching us, directing us, giving us which way to go, which step to take. And Father, helping us by your gentle Holy Spirit, speaking in our hearts to know and to do what you have spoken to us. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Praise the Lord. God is so good. And I trust that you have been ministered to today and that your eyes have been opened to some things. Maybe, maybe you had some questions about some things. This was my big X I was going to put up here too, but I decided not to. But we'll do it now. How about that? Anyway. <laughs> but, um... I trust that you've been blessed and ministered to today and that your lives will never ever be the same. Why? Because you've come together in church in the presence of God and he's touched your life. Whether it's been through music, whether it's been through a brother or sister just speaking to you and, and speaking words of encouragement, or whether it's the word of God that was preached and taught, that's why it's so important to be in church. So important to be amongst believers who believe like you believe. Amen. Praise the Lord.